Welcome everybody to another episode of the FarmCast. I'm Troy Randall with our Precision Ag team, joined by Mike Wimhoff, our VP of Precision Ag here today. And today we're in Severance, Colorado, and we're answering questions. So luckily, well, we've been doing this for a little bit, so you guys have provided some good questions in our comments. So today we're gonna actually take a chance and answer some of those questions you guys have left in the comments. So keep those questions coming. I'll go ahead and get going with our first question here from Mike. So sure. is seeing spray an add-on to exact apply? Yes, it is. So you have to have a an exact apply sprayer to get the precision upgrade kit, uh, puck kit onto that sprayer. So if you don't have exact apply, you can do a, a puck to get exact apply and then another puck to get uh, sand spray. Yep. But uh, it is an add on to exact apply. The Starfire 7000. Any tips on where to find the demo time option for a G5 Plus Universal display? So if you want any demo times, just get with us, your dealer, and we can get you some demos, uh, either a seven day or 30 day for either yeah, receivers, G5s alike. So uh, unfortunately, it's no longer built into the display uh, from the factory. We don't have those hour demos on there, unfortunately. So, but just get with us and we can get you, get you a demo pretty easy to throw, try things out if you're interested in the latest, greatest technology in those new displays so we can get you a demo set up and let you have at it. So. Yeah. So another question is what happens if the cameras get dusty? Yeah, we had that same question uh, ourselves and, and uh, with, you know, we now have 10 sea and spray machines in our area and next year we'll have a lot more. What we've really seen is, is deer recommends cleaning those cameras annually and, and, you know, it is dusty out here, especially yep. this year has been really dry, but we haven't seen any problems really from dust. Uh, as long as you kind of do the recommended maintenance from deer, uh, dust hasn't seemed to be a problem. I'd say other than the cameras right behind yep. the um, the sprayer, at times maybe go into fallback mode when they shouldn't because it maybe is a little more dusty there from the, the tires. And, and I know Deer is also working on a solution for that. So in general, no, especially on the outsides of the boom, no problems with dust really at all. Just those immediate cameras right behind the, the tires of the sprayer. Yep, yep. I did have that same question with one of my guys uh, later this fall too, because he had that same issue where just going to fall back because it was unfortunately so so dry and dusty around here and of course those cameras they're no different than our eyes they can mm -hmm. only see what they can see so if you can't see the through the dust they can't really either so luckily he just had to kind of slow down a little bit so he couldn't go quite as fast as he has been had been going before but he could still slow down a little bit and the cameras could still see because he was just doing some foul spraying spraying some big weeds so that's sure. all he was after so but, yep. does, but yeah deer definitely is they're aware of it so trying to find solutions to those problems as well next one on autopath need a g5 with it i reckon so nope actually it works on gen 4 and g5 so it actually started out with gen 4s you know a couple years ago too but it's pretty much the same for g5 so autopath works for gen 4s and g5 so yeah. good with a uh, yeah, auto yeah. automation and advanced licenses so yeah. will this work if two different sprayers were in the same field for post herbicide and then a fungicide application yep yep so i'm not too sure if he's talking about if that question is talking about different widths or what, if they're, just, if they're talking about just two sprayers running the same field, yep, absolutely, because I've got lots of guys that are pretty much running multiple combines and even multiple grain carts all using that same auto path, mm -hmm. auto path uh, source path throughout the field and doing in-field data sharing, things like that too. So yeah, you can use that same, use that same source pass for pretty much any machine after that source pass you want to. Sure. Like I said before, just sometimes you have to get kind of get crafty with track spacing depending you know what the width is, depending what you're trying to follow. But yeah, it's you yep. can utilize that however however we can make it work for you. So statement question, but it said too bad it only works with 15 inch to 30 inch rows. So that was the case a couple years ago, but now the nice thing deer is pretty much totally uh, removed the requirement for row spacing because we've even got guys that you know drill on seven and a half, 10 inch spacing where it's compatible with. So as they, we've learned more about the system and deer's kind of got it figured out too. They've took a lot of those requirements, so those kind of hard stops for it out of, mm -hmm. out of the operation of it. So really, there is no is no row spacing requirement any anymore, as long as you have that good source operation. Uh, and then depending what your row spacing is after the fact too, it all has to kind of have intermingle. But there really is no row spacing. Uh, requirement anymore and along with that there really is no operational requirement so before they were pretty stringent on you know we could only use a seeding source operation for like spraying and application and then it, it kind of had to fall in line down the row throughout the season but now we can pretty much use any source pass for any operation so we can pretty much use you know a tillage pass all the way through the season if we want to for you know seeding 
application harvester, we can use that you know seeding source pass for application harvester tillage again too. So they really opened it up, so we can pretty much have pretty much use any source pass for any operation after the fact too. So, but but no, if that if that row spacing limitation was something that you had in the past, so I'd encourage you to give it a try again because it's definitely made leaps and bounds the past couple of years. It's pretty dang slick. We got a lot of guys running auto path uh, this year, and they they, they love it. For the to, to say to say the least. So <laughs> good, good. So next question: How do I know how much to load in the sprayer? Do I need to go out and count weeds first? That is a great question, and uh, and and something we've tried out. Like Troy mentioned, we're here at Severance at our test farm. It's a question we had on our farm as we went to use C and spray on our fields. We are looking at other technologies, you know, drone technologies or other technologies that can really help us get that bird's eye view maybe beforehand. But the capabilities that we do have right now uh, is, is really looking at maybe your historical weed pressure map. It doesn't help you with that first time going through, but you could look at your weed pressure map from the last pass or w one to three passes ago. Maybe there's some commonalities there and you kind of get a good sense on how much chemical you need. So that, that can be an, a short-term solution, but we are, as I mentioned, looking at other technologies, other ways to really help determine that because uh, it, it is a big question that our customers continue to ask. Yep, yeah, we haven't had the question too because can I almost just go out, some customers always wonder if they can all just go out and spray water and maybe scene spray just to get a weed pressure map so that way I have a better idea yeah. too. And it's like, well, not as of right now, no, but like I said, we're kind of looking and deer's looking at solutions to better, you know, prepare customers. And that's always been the big question too, is you know, how much how much chemical do, I, chemical do I need? Like, well, there's really, each operation is different. Each field is gonna be different. So it's kind of the big unknown right now. So until you get comfortable with the system, uh, get an idea for the weed, uh, weed pressure out there, then you kind of get a good idea. Then moving forward I, has given guys a lot better foundation of to, you know, how much to mix and when to mix. So. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that the weed pressure maps are being utilized. So yes, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, yep. G5s, yep. so let's kind of go there. There was a question, can you put that in place of a 4640 on an armrest? So that's kind of a trick question. <laughs> so <laughs> depends. If, so I'll, yep. I'll start here. So so technically 4640s don't come on armrest. So the only reason they came on an armrest is if someone took out a 2630 from a sprayer and swapped it in there. So I've actually we've had quite a few guys do that here over the years too, which has worked out pretty good too. So maybe they're talking about 4600, which of course we do have an option to put, uh, right now we do actually have a G5 upgrade kit from uh, Molly 18 and newer sprayers and then Molly 20 and a half uh, tractors and newer, we can upgrade the 4600 Gen 4 to a G5 command center kit, and then also uh, S700 combines. A kit is going to come out for them here uh, this winter, too. So cool. And then also, and actually, something just came out, too, which is pretty cool. We've been playing around with this fall as deer released. And we can actually replace the 2630 on the S600 combine. So if you have an older S600 combine from you know, model year 12 to model year 17. If I got my no, if I got my mall years there right, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure because 700s came out in 18. So, but yeah, if you have a 2630 on there, we can actually take that off now and replace that with a G5 Universal 2, which is very nice. Makes sure, actually I've done a few of those and they work pretty dang nice. So it makes sure. definitely makes it a lot easier, nicer than that 2630 on the armrest. So yeah. one thing we can utilize there too. So so another question for Mike is around our Precision Ag Essentials kits, which actually you and Hank just had, talked about here shortly, which will be on a different episode where you dive into those a little more more in depth. But a question we've had on those is where does one go about buying these essentials kits? Yeah, so we'll definitely help you out in any of our 26 locations to uh, to get that done. Uh, we order them through our whole goods, just like any other pieces of equipment and, uh, and, and we'll help you get set up. It's also making sure that you get into the operation center uh, if you're new to that um, or you know, new to some of the newer technology, depending on what you're upgrading. So each scenario is just a, a little different and, and each customer's in a different place. Um, and so we, we are very happy to help you uh, get engaged with the Precision Ag Essentials Kit through our, through our dealership and uh, reach out to myself, reach out to Troy, uh, any one of our locations, we're happy to help um, uh, get that for you. Yep, and we should usually have those stocked at most locations, so you can almost, if you want to, walk in, walk in one day and walk out with one the same day. Yeah, yeah. As usually two. So I know I, I, a little customer story. We were uh, helping a customer in uh, in Sterling, came in with a broken 2630, mm -hmm. and um, was able to, you know, this was during planting mm -hmm. season, was able to walk out with a, a Precision Ag Essentials kit and get them going that day. Yeah. Uh, so that, like Troy said, we have those in stock and uh, will continue to. Um, you know, the, the days of not being able to stock 
those pieces are are gone for now for sure yep. we're happy to be able to have you get upgraded right away um get it installed the install process is is very simple depending on i guess what you have yep. <laughs> um and what you're coming from it. but uh if you if you have all the mounting brackets for the receiver and uh and brackets for the display very easy uh upgrade process and install process um, for the modem display and receiver uh, get the activations going and, and you're rolling yep uh, let's move to forage harvesters when will the forage harvester get a new style somebody doesn't like the style <laughs> And it's been around for a while, so <laughs> uh, so I've kind of reached in my crystal ball and asked around uh, our core forage chopper specialist, and he's open. Maybe maybe we'll see it uh, next year. Uh, uh, might see it introduced, but maybe model year 26. So don't quote me on that. Too, but we'll most likely have that new X9 cab like we have in the S7 or combine. Yep. It's going to have that G5 uh, integrated display. It's going to have that nice new gen next gen primary display in the corner too. So this, but that's kind of that's kind of looking at the crystal ball. So we might might see it introduced sometime next year and then we might see it in model year 26 too so and a couple questions we, we don't have any of these in our area yet uh, 9rx 830 i think the questions are specifically kind of related to the no def yep. piece of that but yep. uh, how hot will it run with the egr then so actually i had to kind of ask around for that question too but since there's not all that added after treatment it actually runs cooler because we actually have that same engine in our 9700 chopper right now so it's already been out for you know a couple seasons now too so we already have some good experience with it uh there already so and actually asked around and guys said it pretty much actually runs cooler because we don't have you know a dpf filter we don't have those additional filters we don't have that uh, additional weight behind you know the tuber turbocharger around the muffler mm -hmm. that's going to trap heat so actually it seems like those uh, jd18s they run cooler through the egr and overall as of right now without all that added after treatment so which is a good thing to hear so yeah and i think that's a good point is that 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 engine's not new no uh, no it's actually been around yeah deer's so. been working on it for quite a while yeah. it's just new to the ag side and is actually kind of a construction and uh yeah you know, power uh, powertrain motor they've been working on for quite a while too but they're pretty much starting to introduce it to a whole slew of different platforms and actually i was doing Doing some research on the way here but yeah most guys it's funny because i was watching an intro video when that jd engine jd18 engine first came out and like the top comments on the video is like when's going to be in tractors and combines tractors and combines like well <laughs> i think this video is from about two years ago it's like well i got their wish now and the and the big new 9rx and then hopefully down the road we might see it in combines too eventually too as sure. we as we keep uh, seeing bigger and bigger combines too so yep last question on the 9rx uh no def required in anything that's over 700 or under 75 horsepower yep yep so that's all part of that you know final tier four emissions too so pretty much like you said uh, under 75 so there's different brackets and tiers for those emission standards so and you know 75 to 750 or if it's actually 56 kilowatts to 560 kilowatts if you want to get fancy and use the terms in the actual bill i think so but it's equates to 75 and 750 but within those horsepower brackets there's just different requirements for you know knocks and uh, particulate matter that come out of that machine so below that 75 is a different number and then within that you know 75 to 750 is a different number and then once we get above that you know above 750 horsepower those uh requirements go down a little bit so that's where we can get away with not having all that after treatment we can get away with not having def a dpf uh mm -hmm. ser filter all that extra weight because our engines now are so efficient so and actually i was kind of doing some looking uh here recently uh on that question too so a lot of these emission standards came out you know, i think that were defined probably around you know the early 2000s but you know what where were we, where were we technology wide in the early 2000s we i don't think we had 2600s yet we're still out in brown boxes so right. you know how far we came technology wise in the past 20 years i think we made leaps and bounds we almost have autonomous equipment so the same thing just like the technology and our equipment all that same technology has been applied to everything in the machine so engine included so as, as things uh, have progressed and got more you know technologically advanced you know our engines are more advanced too so we can get you know better performance with less out of those so it just makes sense picture i've been seeing floating around quite a bit is spacex their raptor engine or the raptor rocket engine they have had three different iterations you see that first one it looks like this big combobulated mess. The next one looks a little bit more efficient, and the third one looks like a clean, well oiled machine. So sure. just like they've been able to optimize their you know, rocket engines, the same has gone along for everything in Ag2 when it comes to you know, the engines, the technology, we've been able to optimize and better utilize what we have. So, so as the technology gets better, you know, that's why we don't need DEF because we can pretty much get to that final tier four requirements uh, without having all that added equipment on the machine, on the, on the engine too. All right, thanks Mike for answering yeah, those questions. So if you have any more questions, like I said, 
like I said before, uh, feel free to leave them down below in the video. If not, come to our High Plains Ag Expo February 26th and 27th in Greeley, Colorado. We'd love to see you there and answer even more of your questions there. Uh, if you have them, thank you for joining us on this episode of the FarmCast. Thanks, Mike, for being here and Absolutely. answering questions. Um, I'm Troy Randall with our Precision Ag team. We'll see you on the next one.